Welcome guys to another episode of United Talk and in this episode I'm going to give you four more stories surrounding the Reds this week that has been catching my eye and the first one is due with a youth player, his name is Will Keane, I'm sure many of you who watch the reserves and academy last season will know of his prospect and potential uh, to break into the first team and you know a few weeks ago we were having a debate wherever you guys think that he should have went out on loan and he should go out on loan next season in order to develop himself uh, physically as well as mentally and getting exposed in uh, you know first team football and then perhaps he'll get the same treatment as Dan- Danny Welbeck where Welbeck grew as a man and as a player and you know came back a better player for his experience out on loan at Sunderland and perhaps Will King will develop the same way and come back a bigger better player and you know ready for the first team action but um, unfortunately he's not going to get that chance because uh, while he was on under 19 uh, England duty he ruptured his knee uh, ligaments and you know that is going to rule him out for a very long time I think the timeline is for around six months right now and you know it's definitely devastating for the guy because like I said Sir Lex actually was going to promote him to the first team squad Um, what that means is not he's going to be uh, in the first team squad and play in every week that means it's just he's going to train with the first team squad every week but um, more than likely that he would be taking his place, you know, for the reserves more uh, most weeks. So that would be, I think, Selleck's plan to, you know, integrate into the first team and then gradually building that integration up throughout the next few seasons. And, you know, potentially him ending up as a perhaps regular starter or regular player that is placed on a bench. So uh, Will King would have definitely had that potential and, you know, he's a clinical finisher. When you see him in the reserves league, he, he gets, as soon as he get a chance, he put it right into the net. So uh, Will King definitely has that potential in him. But I said, picked up this injury while on an, uh, England under 19 duty and Salix had been quoted saying, I'm very disappointed for the lad. He was in the first team squad for next season and, you know, Oh, I hope that Phil King will recover. And the positive thing I think is that he is very young. I think he's only 18, meaning that a serious injury like this won't, you know, keep him out for much longer than the required time, which is, like I said, six months. Because while you're younger, you're able to get over injuries a lot quicker. I think if, say, if say um, Paul Scholes or even Rio Ferdinand picked up the injury, uh, this injury, I think, would perhaps end their career immediately because not a lot of older players you know mid 30s would able to recover from these sort of injuries uh, successfully so that's only the positive thing about four wheel king that he will able to recover fully and you know hopefully in the new future we will see him in the first team squad so good luck to wheel king out there and what do you guys think of his prospects in the future leave your comment below guys and on the flip of the wheel king story uh, next season we should see the return of Nemanja Vidic as you know he was injured against Basel in a Champions League match and he again suffered a very similar injury to Will Keane and you know he ruptured his uh, knee ligaments meaning how, that he's out for a majority of the season and he only played 8 games last season if you believe it meaning that when he does recover we are basically going to have another world class player back in the squad it's almost like a new signing because you know Vidic has been a very instrumental player in the last few seasons keeping us you know clean sheets with his uh, aerial ability and stuff like that so Vidic a very very uh, useful player to have coming back to any uh, team in the world and Vidic he should be back uh, any time soon I think pre-season will be a bit too early still where he'll be still going through his rehab work and perhaps in the first few weeks of the premiership is that is the his aim to come back and he has been quoting this week you know um, but the hot worst part is behind me I can look forward to the second half of rehab and work more on my fitness hopefully I'll be fit for the big kickoff that so that really uh, outlines Vidic's intention to be back for you know the first game of the season in the Premier League and that'll be a big boost to our title chances because um, I really think that any successful team need a really reliable back four 
and five including the goalkeeper to you know win anything if you look at Man City um, to be fair they had a very consistent back four and a, a great goalkeeper in Joe Hart and you know Vincent Company. I'm sure Nemanja Vidic would have done the same job if not better than Vincent Company in the last seasons and uh, if Vidic was playing who knows we could have perhaps uh, won against Everton and teams like that and you know that could have made a difference but that's in the past Vidic should be back Again, in the near future, perhaps the first week of the Premier League. Keep our finger crossed for him and, you know, our captain should be back very soon. So, leave your comment below, guys, on Nemanja Vidic. And the third story I'm going to talk about is to do with Lewis Nani. And this week, uh, it has emerged that um, we are preparing to offer him a bumper pay rise going from 90 grand a week to 130 grand a week. And uh, Nani has come out saying that he has re not rejected but he has put a counter offer on the table for the club and you know saying that uh, I am really happy but I don't know about my future now I will study opportunities and what that says to me is that like I said the first bit Nanny is happy with the club at the moment he has you know very well placed within the club and he's held in high regard and I think he is one of our main attacking prowess, if you like, in our team. So he's a valuable member of the team now. And, you know, I think he values that a lot. And um, I think Nani, he wants perhaps a deal around 150 grand a week. And I, I, if you think about it now, he's still underneath players such as Wayne Rooney in a wage packet. And, you know, uh, a lot of people would say... Um, but from the comments I've been reading, some of you guys think he's overrated. Some of you guys think he's, uh, you know, an instrumental player, and you need to keep him. And I, I do agree with you guys that um, he is an instrumental player because there's not a lot of him around in the world, and we're lucky to have him. If I have to say that, because you know he has a unique ability with his trickery, his pace, his power, and you know stuff like that and he is a lethal combination and a, a valuable asset in any team and to lose Nani to perhaps you know Juventus has been quoted in interested in him would be a great great loss and you know we are building a squad rather than you know um, perhaps losing Nani and bringing in Gagawa so we want to build upon the squad not you know swap and trade so I would myself would offer him the contract bumper what not to an extent where he holds the club ransom, but I don't think Nani is off to that much more than what we're offering. Um, a lot of cynic, you guys cynically would say that he he's uh, you know too greedy and should be happy with what he's got. But to be fair, he has improved a lot uh, in the last few seasons, and perhaps he is deserving of uh, a new contract and bumper wage uh, package here. So, what do you guys think of this story? I myself would definitely uh, do everything to keep Nani as he is a match winner potentially and you know not a lot of him uh, players like him around the world so I would definitely keep, keep him and offer him whatever he wants so uh, what do you guys think of that what would you guys say to Nani if you had the chance so leave your comment below guys the last story I'm going to talk about is a rivals player now uh, it's Eden Hazard and you know it's quite um, weird for me to talk about a rival player but this week, when he signed for Chelsea officially, he has revealed the reason why he chose Chelsea. And, you know, what he said was that they had a better project and they are a younger team. But as some of you guys might have read my latest article on my website, um, that is not really that true. Because Chelsea, if you look to their squad compared to our squad and the players who are 30 and above, we are on equal players, 8 each. And, you know, I'm not sure where he gets that statistics from because, again, Chelsea was one of these squads where, if you guys didn't know, Andre Villas-Boas was given the task of removing some of these older guards and replacing them with younger players like Juan Mata. And, you know, that was his job and that was ultimately his undoing because the uh, older guards really overturned him and stood against him and that ultimately led to his demise and his departure. And who you further gone to say about how Hazard, he will get more playing time at Chelsea and stuff like that. And that, again, is a 
better project than United. But I'm just saying, if he is thinking that he's going to get more game time at Chelsea, doesn't that mean that he is saying that Chelsea has a weaker squad in the position he wants to play? To be fair, Hazard, he has iterated his intentions to play in the number 10 role. And with Gagawa coming in and Rooney, I don't think he's going to dislodge either one in that position, to be fair. And, you know, in the wide position, he said he wasn't keen on it, but I'm not sure how much he would get in front of Nani, Antonio Valencia, Ashley Young, you know, and players like that, because they are really great players already at the club. And so Hazard, perhaps he has done a smart deal for himself in picking a weaker squad and, you know, letting himself have the opportunity to grow within the squad. So... Hazard, he has said that Chelsea is a better project. I do not believe it myself. And if you looked at the their age overall, they're still a bit higher than us in comparison. So, you know, that's uh, all I have to say is, you know, good luck to him and perhaps we'll see him how he does in a new future. And, you know, I'm sure every United fan will be looking at him and saying how he has regretted his choice. But um, we can't really talk about our rivals players that much but that's it for my coverage of Hazard to be fair because again he has side for the Blues and you know there's no point talking about uh, a Blues player where this is a United channel so there you guys have it that's my uh, video roundup of the latest news surrounding United this past week and I, if you guys like this video please rate, comment and subscribe and you know thanks for all your comments and support out there and cheers